It is I, the Bearded Beerman, coming to you from Jackrabbit Brewery in West Sacramento. We have a great opportunity today to see some brewing in process and hear some history and best of all, get a taste some beer. So keep watching. So, we're back and we are with Jacob, head of sales. Head of sales for Jackrabbit Brewing Company. Yep. And uh, what did you just pour us? Okay, so this is sort of our uh, our flagship beer, as it would be. This is our uh, Belgian style Cezanne, six mm. percent, really clean, drinkable. Uh, when we do these beers, it was essentially thought of as a uh, beer for the Sacramento summer. Uh, great for those hundred degree days down on the river. Just uh, really clean, a little bit of minerally, a little bit of funk in there, because it is a Cezanne, um, but just super drinkable. So we're really sure. really happy with this beer. Yeah, great. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, thank you. Good crisp flavor. Yep. Uh, Mouthfeel is just perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So, what what attributes should I be picking up here? Um, I think for ours, I think you get a little bit of that lemon quality, a little bit of that lemon aroma. Um, as I said, there is a little bit of that 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 kind of that classic saison uh, straw sort of aroma. Uh, there is a little bit of a minerally quality mm -hmm. to kind of keep it light and light and drinkable. Um, but above everything else, I mean, I, I keep going back to the word drinkable, but that is the, yes. that is the, the big thing you want to look for with this beer. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that goes down really smoothly. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Excellent. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, 6%. Yeah, this is... It's the beer that we've done for the longest period of time now. And, okay. and this is the farmhouse? Uh, the farmhouse Saison, correct. Oh, okay, yep. very nice. Yeah, farmhouse oh. sale, yeah. yeah. Saisons are kind of an interesting, I mean, it's such a broad category of beers, yeah. really. Um, and I think ours just sits on, you know, just a really, really pleasant side of that, mm -hmm. of that big expanse of what what a farmhouse can be. Um, yeah. yeah, I just love it. Love it. It's, uh. it's, no fuss, no frills, but that's that's what I think saisons are meant to be. Yeah, I mean saisons. These are you know these are farm workers beers in Europe. You know, I mean, you see a lot of American breweries. You can you can add just a huge amount of alcohol, huge amount of hops, and you end up with a twenty dollar bottle of something yeah. that you know it might be good, but I don't know is that is that really what a saison needs to be? I don't know. Yeah, um, just the brewery, me. Uh, what's the the base of this? Uh, primarily, it's a pilsner malt. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. It's kind of a classic Pilsner malt, yeah. And we use a Belgian golden ale uh, for the yeast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Oh, wow. Nice. Uh, uh. I get crazier and crazier with beer to soak. Alright, nice and fresh. Oh, look at that. The story behind the name is actually really funny. We had an account. We used to make a beer called uh, Partly Cloudy. Okay. And it was it was it was like a hazy IPA that wasn't you know like insanely hazy basically that was the idea. Um, and we had an account that for some reason on their menu was written out as Party Clouds. <laughs> and the name was so funny that I just we just had to kind of roll with it. I think at that it was just it was just too funny not to not to make a beer called Party Clouds and. It our looks like a our happy brewmaster cloud. came up with the label, and it was just like this. Just like it's 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 terribly wonderful. Yep. Um, you know, in every way. But yeah, so we, we do this. I think this is our second can run. Oh, it uh, smells very juicy. It. Yeah, no, it's 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 a very juicy. It, it's a it's a juicy <laughs> IPA in in every way, shape, and form. I mean, it's that huge like tangerine, melon. Um, the El Dorado hops are sort of for me the big showcase in here, but I believe it is. <laughs> Uh, Azaka and Amarillo too. Okay. Uh, Amarillo is a hop that we've been using more and more as the years have gone on, and Azaka um, has also become like kind of a staple for us. Mm. And just combined, it's just like that huge tropical fruit, um, you know, that that El Dorado melon and stuff like that. It's just this is just a really good. This is this is a beer for people who want like the New England juices. That we, that's what it's made to be. So. Oh yeah, that melon comes out mm -hmm. strong. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, pretty balanced. It's a good hefty mouth feel. It's an appropriate amount of bitterness, but yeah. you know, you get a nice little backbone of malt that kind of keeps it keeps everything in check basically. So Yeah, you, it's definitely yeah. more balanced than you get with some of those North Englands where it's just, yeah, here's the fruit. Hi. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, and that's as I said before, I mean, balance and drinkability are sort of the tenets of what we do being, you know, 
our backbone is is the old world styles, and that's what we think of as being one of the more important parts. Is, oh, okay. is food friendliness and sort of palatability. That so, makes sense. yeah. Mm. Oh. It's a really good IPA. This guy goes fast, so keep, <laughs> good. keep an eye out on good shelves in the area. It will not be around for more than a, a week or two generally. So, wow, that is incredible. Uh, I think this is the. This is the second can run we've done of it. Won't be the last, but yeah. excellent. Mm. I'm glad you like it. Glad you like it. Yeah. Yeah, seven percent. But it's a good. It's a good New England. It's a good example of a New England. Yes, so. absolutely. And being from the Northeast, I kind of there you I go. appreciate that we've done that actually. <laughs> That's always a winner where you yeah. can appreciate it yeah. from the other side of absolutely. it. Absolutely, absolutely, oh. yeah. You, you were saying that uh, Jackrabbit's uh, about six years old? Yeah, the brewery itself is about six years right now. Uh, the tap room that we're uh, sitting in is going on its third anniversary, I believe. Okay. Um, we originally had uh, four owners, um, kind of college buddies, and they were all sort of avid homebrewers with a lot of skills that were not applicable. Uh, uh, a lot of extra skills like welding and the ability to just deal with a lot of stress. <laughs> um, they fought, you know, with, with, with all that ability. Sounds like a good time to open a brewery. Um, so Jackrabbit, uh, I believe we were the 12th uh, brewery to open in Sacramento. Oh, okay. Which uh, doesn't sound like an early one, but considering you know, there's that's, how, yeah. many, uh, how many thousands of breweries are, I think, what are there, like 90 and I think, yeah. 75, between, between 90 and 75 or something like that in Sacramento and more on the way every year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're sort of that, that old guard of, of those folks along with Bike Dog and New Helvetia and YOLO and yeah, you know, it's been they definitely it's been a crazy trip. Yeah, yeah. Sacramento's really taken the the point of being the capital very seriously and being the capital. Oh no, it of has. It has. I also. mean, we, depending on the day, I mean, we have more breweries than you know the Front Range, yeah. and we're right up there with you know being talked about in the same conversations as Portland, and you know that that's cool. It's sort of daunting at the same time, but yeah. it, I think it's in a way though it's good because I think it's raised everyone's standards and. You know, there's been a lot of co-collaboration between the industry, mm -hmm. not just in, in beers, but in terms of, you know, the community of people who actually are employed. We make our living in beer. Yeah. And it's cool to see that there's a lot of other people who are, you know, kind of doing the same things. And, you know, we're all looking at the laws and we look at, you know, the trends. And it, it's it's a lot more it's a lot more uh, more help and collaboration than there is animosity generally, yeah. um, which is great to see in the beer industry because it is, it's a tough industry. So Well, you introduce alcohol, people usually want to come together. Yeah, no, it's true. Work closer true. together. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. It's a fun industry. We all love what we do, so it's kind of hard to not want to, when you run into other people who make their living in beer, it's kind of hard not to want to talk to them right. about, you know, what are you guys brewing or what's going on in the state right now. So yeah. Yeah, it's been good. It's been good. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Why are you missing cans? What's going on, Abby? <laughs> All right, so what was this one? So this is our uh, Maple Pecan Oatmeal Stout. Uh, this is one of our rotating stout series. Uh, basically every season, uh, we put a new stout to it. So in the summer, it was a coconut oatmeal right. stout. Before that, in the spring, it was a chocolate for Easter. Yes. And then we had a coffee in the winter. But uh, we had to fill out our, our, our fall selection. So we ended up with a uh, Maple Pecan. Mm. It sounded very, very uh, fall appropriate. As myself being from the Northeast, uh, having lived in Vermont for a little bit, I was really happy that we actually used real Vermont maple syrup in this. That was something that I was really hoping for, that we wouldn't use Canadian, that we would actually get American <laughs> Vermont. Vermonters take their syrup very, very seriously. Um, so that's obviously a big feature of this, but then we also uh, toast the uh, the pecans right in house and we oh, add them. Nice. Uh, yeah. So you get this really nice kind of sweet nuttiness, um, whereas the, uh, the a lot of the aroma is actually coming from the maple syrup. Um, so it's not as syrupy as you would imagine, um, not quite as sweet, um, but instead you get a really nice layer of a maple aroma, a sweet, smooth, nutty, kind of toasted sweetness, and then that, uh, that really nice uh, coffee, baker's chocolate, espresso, mm -hmm. you know, just dark, deep uh, malt base from our house oatmeal stout, basically. Oh, wow. so. oh man, that smells amazing. And as all you know, I love a fantastic stout. Yeah, it's really good, mm. and it doesn't have the gimmicky sweetness like for us. This is this is this is just a really it's like an authentic stout. It's not yeah. 
It's not foofy, it's not overly sweet. Yeah, that's so nice. It's a slightly dry, great mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that, that nice burst of the, the nutty flavor. In that. Yeah. Oh, that. yeah, it's it's super well layered. This is this is probably my favorite, and not just because of the maple syrup, this is probably my favorite of what we've made out of the series so far, so. The wine barrels? Uh, yeah, this is our uh, nightcap. Oh, okay. That is dark. Yeah, so. Not what you expect when you think of a sour. No, no, not at all. Oh, wow. Mm. This is a, this is a stour. A stour? Sour stout, a stour. Um, but there's a lot of a lot of cool stuff going on in this guy. So there is a um, there's some uh, local uh, black cherries added into the barrels. Um, it's a blend of barrels. Uh, they're all red wine. Uh, so I couldn't remember the vintage. I believe there's a couple of Zin in there. There might be some Merlots. Um, but it is a it's sort of a a blend of barrelage basically. Um, but this is this is a big beer too. So it's it's a Russian Imperial Stout base with uh, tart black cherries that were oh, actually wow. picked locally. Um, one of the things we like to do when possible, we always try to use local fruit. Um, it's Central Valley. Mm -hmm. A lot of our neighbors and a lot of our family have some sort of trees or some connection to a farm. Um, we like to use those when possible, and either getting peaches or cherries or whatever else we can get to use in our beer. So oh, excellent. Yeah, so we always like to use Central Valley fruit when possible. It's a good bit of brisk tartness. The cherries definitely there. There's some oak characteristic. Oh wow! Um, yeah, the barrel character is definitely there. Yeah, it's super tasty. The the stout base mild out the the sour components of it. It's a lot of malt in there, but not at this point. I mean, as as barrels get older and older, the sourness becomes more and more pronounced. I mean, you're basically building a culture inside right. that, that yeah. unit. Um, and at this point, this is, I think, the third iteration that we've pulled from these barrels. So there is okay. a, I don't know if there's much that would stop the, the tartness on this at No, this I, point. I think that tartness It's appropriate, though. I mean, it's amazing. not, yeah, it's not insanely, there's more than just the sourness here. Um, I, I always say, I mean, I, I don't think you generally go to, go to a restaurant and it's like, how often you go to a restaurant and they're like, this is the most salty thing you've ever tasted. <laughs> you know, or like, it, it, it's like, I, I don't think we want to make beers where this is the most sour thing you've tasted. Right. It's like sourness can be used as a, as a component of the, of the beer as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to say it again and I say it a lot of drinkability, it being like that huge component of, you know, when we develop a beer and when we brew a beer, a good beer to us is something that's drinkable and palatable. And, Absolutely. You know, and I, think, I think the sourness plays into that really well in this, where it's it's a component of the overall beer, yeah. rather than being, it is a, it's definitely a sour beer, but it's not sour, sour, sour. It, it's, there's barrel character, there's some dark malts, there's a little bit of that almost like molasses sweetness topped off with a sour. The sourness is like, it brings everything together and it balances out like a lot of those dark, yeah. you know. So in that regards, I mean, you ask, does the stout? Yeah, I mean, the stout probably does help to, to balance it out then, because it is. Yeah, because I've, I've had some sours, stout. and you, you take a sip, and you're like, oh, good, I have more to drink. Yeah. But this, yeah. it's like, oh my gosh, I want to take another sip. Mm -hmm. What other attributes am I going to pick yeah. up? Yeah. Yeah. And oh wow. Mm. Yeah, it warms up really well. It's got a nice little bit of carbonation, just like a very light. It's really delicate, but it's still, I mean, this is a big beer. I think it's 11% alcohol. I mean, this is a mon it's a monster sour. I mean, it is, it is a, it is not a small beer in any way, shape or form. Um, but that's what we call a nightcap. You know? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's you're like, done <laughs> you drink this and it's like, it's, it's big and it's like, what do you, what do you, what do you drink after a beer like this? You know, it's, it is a lot. It's good wow. with food. Dark oh. meats or something like that. Really gamey meats are really phenomenal with this, but. Uh, oh, some venison? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh. yeah. Yeah, just like anything that can kind of stand up to it, so. Oh, I think this could make an incredible marinade on top of it also. Oh, probably, yeah. yeah you could just soak something with this, yeah. Yeah, we do this probably maybe once a year. Uh, that's, I mean, it's, it's when it's ready is when it's ready. You know, I mean, we don't, we generally keep this more in-house. Mm -hmm. um, we'll send a five gallon out here or there to choice restaurants basically, but, um, for the most part, because of the, the limited quantities, mm -hmm. it's like come in and get it, have a glass of it, try it here, kind of there type deal. Is, we just we can't we don't produce enough, and I mean it, it, the, the timeline of making this thing is so crazy. And well, what's the uh, the time on making something like this? Oh God, uh, when it's ready, but I think batch to batch, the time that we kind of refill the barrels and check everything, and uh, it's got to be 
pushing the better part of a year oh, wow. generally for a beer like this. Yeah, I mean, when, when we add the stout, we're looking at generally multiple seasons till this beer is actually back in keg. So when we add the beer to the barrels, at least it's, it's a long, it's a long lead time. Yeah, yeah, but it's labor a lot of love. time to labor see that love, profit man. sitting there. We try to forget about it. Yeah. That's kind of the trick, you know. I, I think I think myself, our um, our, our head brewer, and, and usually uh, our office manager and head of, uh, head of sales and or head of uh, events and stuff, we'll usually sit down and we'll test the barrels maybe once every eight weeks, six to eight weeks, basically, okay. and kind of we get to track stuff. And it's like, okay, we knew this one was coming up. We can now pull this, and we'll have you know backup, but. For this guy, it's it's always like, oh, it'll be even be better in two months, and when it's ready, it's great. But oh. it takes it's it takes a long time. Oh, that's an, yeah. that is incredible. Yeah, thank you. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out to absolutely, man. Uh, for us to try some beers and get some history on this place, and I appreciate yeah, it so my much. Pleasure. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Pushing the better part of a year, oh, wow. generally, for a beer like this. Yeah, I mean, when, when we...